Hi there, I'm Taryn Lowry. I'm a chiropractor at Peace of Life Chiropractic. I want to tell you a little bit today about pediatric chiropractic care. Um, we have parents present um, all kinds of conditions and issues and symptoms um, with their children um, here. And uh, I'd like to just kind of introduce you to some of those and what that looks like and then how we can help uh, address those symptoms. Uh, a lot of the things that parents bring to us are um, difficulty with elimination, um, sometimes digestion in general, uh, poor sleep quality or even quantity, um, sometimes spit up or difficulty latching, you know, in our infants, and then um, sometimes even colic. Uh, ear problems are a big concern for a lot of children, you know, multiple rounds of antibiotics or just trouble with chronic immune in general. Um, even stress and mood challenges so maybe they're having difficulty you know transitioning from one caregiver to another or a new teacher or maybe they have a new friend in their class that they're having a hard time with um, and they're having some anger issues or they're having you know all of a sudden they started wetting bed or something like that um what else uh Balance and coordination, that's a huge one. Um, oftentimes I'm pointing it out to the parents that there's an imbalance with their ability to um, conduct transitional movements or even with their gait, sometimes you know just touching their finger to their nose, things like that. Um, some of those are a little bit more evident in the older kids and then sometimes we find it in real uh, young children, even just with their crawl, you know their crawl, they crawl with everything but their right leg stays stuck out or you know they try to you know do their elbows or sometimes they kind of snake through the their crawl motion so that cross crawl pattern is really important to develop and so we really advocate that whether we're starting with a newborn or we're already into you know the stages where they're beginning to crawl so um, a couple of reasons why that happens and why it relates to the nervous system uh, the nervous system is really important we have three main things we try to differentiate with pediatric patients um, one is spinal so that's probably what most people are familiar with with chiropractic care. Um, so there's oftentimes a subluxation somewhere along the spinal cord. Um, in pediatrics, we commonly find it in the parasympathetic nervous system. So those centers are here at the bottom of the sacrum and then here, um, the bottom of the sacrum. <laughs> those centers are here at the tailbone or the bottom of the spine and then here at the top of the spine in the occiput and the atlas. So it's not uncommon at all that we find some type of um, subluxation there. Uh, subluxations in general are created by stress. It could be physical stress, uh, such as birth. Uh, it could be chemical stress, you know, maybe the environment that they're in, or maybe a food that they're eating, or might be mom's eating, <laughs> uh, maybe a gut flora imbalance, things like that. Uh, it could also be emotional stress. So anytime uh, a child doesn't feel safe, feels hungry, you know, anything that's undesirable, it's very black and white for them. So they go straight into sympathetic nervous system where there's, you know, the fight or flight response and they start crying. <laughs> um, so that's one area that we uh, try to differentiate with our pediatric patients. Cranial function is another area we try to differentiate. All these different colors on the skull model represent different bones. Um, these bones, as, you're, as all of us are born, uh, have no sutures. They don't have a joint. So they're all, I think, of them like lily pads on the water. They're very mobile. So a lot of times we'll find that children who have a a tendency to turn to the right, for example, will develop a flattening in the occiput and the parietal bones, um, sometimes a rotation in the temporal bone. Um, all kinds of different variations of cranial malformation can occur, so that's definitely something that we screen for, especially in the infant care. Um, another condition is uh, with the cerebrospinal fluid. So cerebrospinal fluid is made in the ventricles of the brain. It pumps around the cranium and down the spine. It changes over very rapidly. It's affected by respiration, crying, sucking, um, even internal pressure such as bearing down. You know, if your child's having difficulty passing their bowel movement and they're really bearing down to do that, that has an influence on the cerebrospinal fluid. Cerebrospinal fluid uh, is, ironically, um, pumped by the parasympathetic nervous system. So sacrum and occiput move each breath and they're actually facilitating the motion of that um, fluid. So if there's a spinal subluxation, a cranial subluxation, Either of those will affect the cerebrospinal fluid. So basically, we're just analyzing their nervous system to make sure everything's working well together. Um, in infant care, we um, use this setup that I have here. If you've seen pictures on our Facebook or anything, this is our famous blanket, I guess. This is a gift that um, was for my son, but I just love it, and we talk about all the animals and the letters and the colors, so it's kind of fun. Um, Baby, there's a hole here in the center. Um, this is also a pillow we use during pregnancy. Um, so mom would put her sweet little uterus and baby in there. Um, once they're out, we put them back in that hole. 
Um, and then I'm able to turn them into whatever position I need them. Um, during their adjustment, the touch is very, very gentle. So we call it the weight of a dime. It's just a sustained pressure, but it's very, very gentle. Um, depending on how severe the condition is in the nervous system, it can be uncomfortable. Um, I always tell parents the comfort level is up to them. So if baby appears to be uncomfortable or they're getting a little bit uncomfortable with how baby's responding, we just stop, we take a break, we soothe nurse, whatever needs to happen for us to be able to recover that level of comfort and then we resume what we're doing. Um, in this process, we're analyzing their entire nervous system, uh, reflexes, tone, uh, motor function, all kinds of stuff. Um, I'm always analyzing abdomen for digestive tone and making sure that baby's eliminating fully, that there's no restriction in the digestion. Uh, we're looking at joint function and then like we talked about earlier, spinal, cranial, and then cerebrospinal fluid. So um, with that said, just to reiterate, comfort is super important. The touch is very, very, very gentle. Um, at the end of our infant care adjustments, we uh, do an inversion. So we just resume that position that baby was in in the uterus. So basically we're holding them by their thighs and then just gently lifting them up. So they'll be hanging upside down. A lot of parents are intimidated by that, but it's a very gentle technique. It does two things. One, it's an analysis for me to where I can see if there's any restrictions that are persistent that I need to readdress in their adjustment. It's also a treatment because it's a traction for the nervous system and it helps to unravel some of those adhesions. So just kind of a simple thing. I definitely wouldn't recommend doing that at home if you haven't been assessed by a chiropractor or you're with the help of a chiropractor um, because there's some specifics to it, but um, just to anticipate if you're planning on bringing your child in for an infant visit, but that is typically part of the visit. Um, we'll transition around the office and I'll show you some of the other areas that we're working with. Um, we talked a little bit about how we like kids to be comfortable during their adjustments. So um, one of the things that we do is we offer um, kind of flexibility in where we do the adjustments. Um, a lot of times whenever uh, the infants graduate into uh, a seated position and they can sit unassisted, then we'll have them sit up on the table. Eventually they get a little bit more mobile and want to wander around a little bit. So one of the distractions that we can uh, we typically incorporate is uh, the fish tank. So we'll come back and the kids will stand here and you know we'll say, you know, look for the black fish, look for the orange fish, and mom and dad are interacting with them too. All the while I'm using that sustained pressure to help to balance those civilizations, um, helping give some relief to their nervous system. Okay, so there's all kinds of options like we were talking about with keeping um, your pediatric patient comfortable. So once they get into the ones and twos, again, they're way more mobile and they're wanting to get around and be entertained instead of be held down and restricted to one position. So um, oftentimes we'll have them uh, play in the toy basket and you know we'll do hide and go seek or whatever with some of the animals all the while I'm working on their spine. Uh, depending on what level uh, or what age they get introduced to chiropractic care and then just depending on how, if they have any sensory issues or maybe safety issues in general, sometimes mom and dad will sit in the chair and the child will sit you know, chest to chest with them and then I'll sit on the floor and work on their spine and we'll sing a song or something like that just to help them stay focused on feeling comfortable. Um, infants toddlers alike love the ball <laughs> so the bouncing is actually very soothing so a lot of times we'll take advantage of that and either I myself will sit on the ball with them on my chest if they're comfortable with me and I can work backwards um, or we'll have mom and dad sit with them and I'll try to work while they're gently bouncing. Um, comfort as you can tell continues to be our theme so as kids get a little bit older they're more comfortable coming back to the table um, and we kind of graduate into more of a manual adjustment so um, Everything still is very gentle. We use a lot of speed over force, so um, we still go by that comfort rule. Um, we use the drops in the table. They come up just a little bit, and they're just real quick to drop down. So the speed is what we're looking for to where we can be real quick in that joint, get a very comfortable yet efficient release um, without creating any uh, postural strain for the child or even you know any too much pressure that's uncomfortable. Um, we... Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, so, as, in addition, as the kids get a little bit older, um, we can incorporate the giggle gun. So, this is just a percussor. Um, it creates an um, in and out movement into the muscle. So, it helps the brain have the signal that um, it can relax that muscle. So, it's really helpful in helping to relax the muscular system that will help um, the stability of the skeletal system a little bit more. Uh, we also use the activator here and there, whether it's on an extremity joint or sometimes with a child who just doesn't prefer to have um, the manual adjustment done. So um, they instantly think it's a, a shot, but we clarify quickly, it's an activator. Uh, so it just makes like a little thump, um, kind of a click uh, whenever it releases the joint. So, but it's very, very focused adjustment. And so it allows us to do a really good job and be very quick at it. Um, we'll also incorporate the cold laser. It's an infrared light therapy that helps to stimulate ATP production, just helping cells do what they do faster and better. Um, we use that in, anywhere from infancy up into you know the teens for neuromusculoskeletal injuries and things like that. Um, we can use it in infants for lip and tongue tie revisions or lymphatic congestion or earaches or yeast infections or anything at all. So it's a really cool tool that we get to use as well. Um, so with that said, hopefully you've got a small introduction into pediatric chiropractic care. Um, we hope that if you have any questions or um, this kind of enlightens you into a journey that you haven't uh, endeavored yet, then uh, feel free to check out our website at thisoflifechiropractic.com. Uh, you can also call us or email us with any questions that you have. So hope you'll have a great day. Thanks for checking in.